lace, lace, and more lace. Women love lace. We have visions of getting married in lace-covered garments and bringing our babies home in lacy day gowns. I love lace. Most of you know that. Today, Pam Mashey is going to share lace-to-lace -lace applications as we have so much fun turning a vintage wedding dress into a beautiful christening gown. Sounds dreamy? So get out your lace and let's create new ways of using it. And I would really like to welcome you to my sewing room today. In your imagination, travel with me back to 1970. This beautiful christening dress started out as a wonderful wedding dress, which was worn on that day. I'm going to share with you the techniques on this gorgeous christening dress, which started life as a wedding dress. The lace and the entredeau neckline, very traditional neckline finish for a high yoke dress. Look at the beautiful, beautiful fabric. The embroidery is on the organza. The sleeves are also made of the beautiful embroidered organza and have entredeau beading and gathered lace edging. Coming down on the skirt, the first part of the, and this skirt fabric is the wedding dress skirt fabric. Then entredeau, insertions, entredeau, and then a beautiful, beautiful piece of the embroidered organza or organdy on the original dress. And then another lace, a uh, French lace uh, fancy band has been added. And then the bottom of the christening dress is another band of the beautiful original wedding dress. And I have to show you the slip. It is the fabric on the slip of the wedding dress. And then the ruffles have been, the pleats have been put in for the bottom of this beautiful slip. I just love this dress and I love the story that goes with it. Okay, 1970 is the day. Here is the bride in her wedding dress that she wore this dress. And as you can see, the, uh, the beautiful embroideries are on the organza part. And then the skirt has the plainer, plainer fabric. Okay, let's go over here. The beading is butted together with the insertion if it's going to be put on flat. But if you're going to use the beading around the sleeves, the insertion is gathered. Now, the sleeve treatment would be entre dos, and I would... Trim off that edge of the entredeau, butt it up to the beading, and the edging has been gathered to the beading, and that is the sleeve treatment. Then lace insertions are butted together and zigzagged. That's a very easy thing to do. And if you do happen to have an edge joining foot, that keeps them from falling apart when you're zigzagging. If you don't have one, you just kind of have to watch real carefully, but an edge joining foot solves that problem. Now the piece on the skirt, the extra insertion on the bottom is very interesting. It has lace edging turned upside down at the top. Insertion, 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 and edging. And then here's what it looks like put together. I have a little slice of the skirt over here to show you how beautiful they are when all those techniques were used together. Top of the skirt, first fancy band. Beautiful embroideries. And see how interesting this is with the French work, the French uh, laces. The edging comes up on the top, the insertions, and edging on the bottom. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Pam Mashey. Pam is Director of Education for Baby Lock USA. Pam, welcome to the show. And I'm so excited about Thank your telling us this story about your making this dress. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, I'd like to share with all of your viewers again the information that Martha gave you on the wedding dress. Here's actually the bodice of the dress. And in working with a wedding dress, I think the first thing that you want to do is planning. Look at how the wedding dress is laid out in the areas that you're wanting to and the techniques that you're wanting to actually use and incorporate those into the dress. Now, to take you through the steps as we have them, as Martha said, we did use the beading and the gathered lace and you usually do one and a half the times, times the uh, distance for your lace edging. Then we did take the uh, edging or the insertion lace and we join those together and I have a little special trick for you when we work with that and here again we have the insertions and the lace edgings as they are joined together and before they're joined together as well uh, the band as you said is one continuous line and that created the bottom of our skirt every single piece that was used in the dress is original 
but we did use the insertion laces and the French laces to create those bands. Now, the way, let's go over to the machine, and we are going to set it up for a zigzag stitch. And if you look at the little card that I have the laces attached to, I like to attach them to a little piece of a post-it note. This way, as I slide this under my presser foot, I'm able to make sure that everything's lined up, and as I guide it, it gives me a nice edge to start on. This way, all of my laces, again, as I said, are lined up, and then as I stitch, they're all going to be joined together. Okay. Now, and I love the, that little trick, and of course your edge joining foot helps you to keep it together. Exactly. The edge joining foot allows you to butt the two edges together, and this way you have your laces all lined up. I like particularly the little trick about the post-it note, because then everything is all lined up together before you start. I will do the same thing when I work with the gathered lace, and as I place the gathered lace under the presser foot along the edge of my lace joining or edge joining foot, I can use the post-it note to guide that gathered lace. So now as I stitch, my fingers don't have to get right on top of the fabric or right on top of the laces, but this way it will guide itself in and we don't have to maneuver them. You put the post-it note right here on the, sort of to hold that gathered lace down. Right, right. It holds oh, the gathered lace down. Now that's down. not the sticky part. This is the sticky, sticky part. The sticky part is down. To, okay. The sticky oh, part is Pam, down that is and that's fascinating. holding the lace in place. I think that is Isn't the that most great? wonderful Isn't trick. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for making this beautiful dress and You're very sharing these incredible tricks. That's the first time I've ever seen the <laughs> post-it note trick. That is just fabulous. And now Pam has some sewing inspirations for you. you have brought the most beautiful things. Tell us about this wonderful picture that's so unusual. Okay, well we made this using the embellisher and it is so many times when you work with antique garments you might have bits and pieces of them left and when you make a collage and this is a picture of my grandparents that was printed out on fabric and then the collage was made using bits of the laces and parts of the fabric from her wedding dress just and, we made the in, and just mashed it together and it, and it punches it all bunch. together all right Tell us about this pillow, which I absolutely love the story of that pillow. Well, the pillow is from uh, our earlier segment as we were working with the wedding dress. And as I was taking the wedding dress apart to create the uh, christening dress, I found a piece of rice. So right here in the pillow, I took the piece of rice and I placed it under the organza so that they'd have a little bit of that memory from their wedding day. And that's again, the color of their wedding, that writing. And you have the bride and groom in the date and the most, that's the most interesting thing to have that little piece of rice that got caught in her wedding dress right, that from day 1970. From and the baby bonnet. The bonnet that goes along. Little grandmother's hope chest looking bonnet. Little isn't grandmother's it? hope chest. And the ribbon that I used was the ribbon from the dress again. And it was the piece of ribbon that joined the bodice to the skirt. And this little dress right here. Little dress again from our friend that we used the wedding dress from. This is her confirmation dress. And I made the little dress for her granddaughter as a From Sunday church 1961, dress. 1961, Oh, this mm -hmm. is wonderful. And little cute socks. Cute socks. Here we have the serger crochet again, and we're going to be working with a 12 weight cotton thread in our loopers, and we continue to serge around in order to create that crochet. Then I just show them the beautiful, beautiful serger projects you have over here, Pam. Well, here we have uh, several different items that have been made with the serger and we have a book cover several different scissor cases a pin cushion and a bag that you could carry all of these items into a club or a class meeting and any sewing friend would love to get any of those little scissor cases and you did the lace was that the lace on the serger there yep this is the lace that we made on the serger using the chain stitch again from the chain stitch on the machine on the serger Pam Thank you for bringing so many wonderful ideas. And now Pam has another idea for you that is so quick and so easy. Pam, 
Pam, tell us about this adorable project? Well, since my projects that I've been sharing with you today have actually been recycling a lot of different types of fabrics, what I thought I would do is share with you another way that you can recycle or turn items that you've had or collected over the years into newer items. Now, every heirloom sewer has other pieces or small pieces of lace. Now, we can work with these pieces of lace and join them together as we showed you in the earlier part of the segment on the lace to lace application. This one we've used a handkerchief in order to create the little, well we could use it as a purse, we could use it as a chair adorner, we could use it for a gift basket. Option is up to you. This one is also a piece of lace, crocheted lace, that was from an antique pillowcase. Now, as I have on here, you can see such a variety of different types of handkerchiefs that you can use. You want to have a handkerchief that has maybe a fancy edge to it. And simply by taking the handkerchief, the first step we're going to do is to fold down the top edge of that handkerchief. This way, you have a nice V point at the, at the front. And that'll show you right here. Here we have the V that we've placed down and on a plain handkerchief, you could embroider someone's initial on here if you wanted to, or you could add additional laces on the edge if you're wanting to as well. Now here we have the pattern piece. Now the pattern piece, as you can see, is not exactly a triangle. It has edges that have been cut off so that as when we turn and we stitch the uh, cone shape, we don't have points sticking out of the top edge. So again, we have the edge trimmed down and our pattern shape has been cut out. Once we take this pattern shape and we've cut it out, we're simply going to fold it in half, take it to our sewing machine or serger, and we're going to sew the side edge and the bottom. Once that edge is completely stitched, then we're going to turn right side out and add the decorative trim that we want for the handle. And simple Those fabric. are so cute. I was just thinking how pretty they'd be to hang on a Christmas tree if you had... What a, a great idea. Well, just all kinds of pretty things. And you could put little flowers sure. or, or little candies little in it. Candies. I know my grandchildren would like those hung on a Christmas tree with little candies, little candies in it so in. they could dip into mm -hmm. <laughs> Pam, that's a wonderful idea. Thank you so very much. And now I have some hand embroidery for you. happy to have as my guest today, Wendy Shane. Wendy has published over 30 patterns under the name of Petite Crochet. She has authored four books on hand embroidery, and Wendy has studied at the Royal School in London and in Madeira, Portugal. Wendy, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Martha. It's always great to be here. I, I want to talk a little bit about the sewing basket lid that I brought. Uh, as you can see, it has lots of different embroidery stitches. And today, we're going to focus on these little buttonhole flowers. They're really sweet and easy to make. So let's get started. The first sample I have with me is, as you can see, just a large circle with a hole in the middle. <laughs> Normally what I do is I just draw a dot and then um, for this flower, it just looks better if you have a little bit of space in there to work the stitches. So I'll usually take a stiletto or an awl and get it, get it started. Now to tie on, you use a waist knot and I have a knot in my thread already. And whenever you have a shape like this that you're going to cover up with stitches, it's a great place to tie on. So I'm going to bring the needle in and just do maybe two or three little back stitches. And then as I work around, those stitches are going to cover that up so we don't have to worry about anybody seeing them. Now this stitch is a traditional buttonhole stitch, but it's worked in the round. We're going to begin by bringing the needle out right on the line anywhere in the circle. Doesn't matter where you start. Usually I start towards myself, so position the hoop accordingly. Now I'm going to bring the needle into the center and out on the outer edge. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that I leave just a little bit of space and I hold the, the thread down so that I actually catch the thread in the stitch. Meaning so that I have like a little loop there. I'm going to work the stitch around now and you want to give it a little bit of tension because remember we need to have a little bit of an opening in the center so it doesn't become too crowded with all the stitches. The next stitch goes right beside it. 
leave a little bit of space. You don't want to leave too much because too, you don't want it to be too airy, but yet you don't want it to be too compact. So I guess as you stitch, you'll, you'll kind of get a feeling for how many or how close the stitches need to be. And I'm just going to work it around. Keep going. Hold it so. Make sure you pull it the same tension throughout. You want to make sure your little pearls line up on the edge. The stitch that you catch is called a pearl. And uh, I guess because it looks like a little pearl on the end, I'm not really sure. But um, you can do this stitch in almost any kind of thread. You can use pearl cotton or stranded cotton or floche or silk, just anything you can imagine. And it makes a sweet little flower. And as you can see, it's very simple to do. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you is how you would tie off on the stitch. Let's see, let me do a few more because as you can see, it's very addictive. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> impossible to stop. One more thing I want to show you before we turn, turn it around is just Feel free to reopen the opening if you have to. Uh, normally when I stitch on a loose weave fabric such as linen or batiste, the opening opens on its own. The pulling of the, the tension of the pull of the thread of the stitch of each stitch opens the opening further. And so I don't know if you're gonna need a stiletto every time. Okay, so now let's go ahead and tie off. I think I've done enough and I'll move that over. Okay, now one important part about how to join these stitches is you have to position the last stitch in a, such a space that it looks like a continuous row of stitches. So what I mean by that is this, the stitch on the end, the purl stitch, is an over under stitch. So the last stitch needs to go beneath or under the first stitch so that it will be continuous. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring it together. And now you can see that you can't tell where I started the stitch and stopped. On the back, it looks as pretty on the back. Take the needle in. And now I will probably need to pick up a little bit of fabric to tie off here because these stitches are not very tight. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take a small back stitch. Usually when I do a back stitch from the back, I make sure I don't nip the thread in the front. So do a, a little check before you pull the needle through. Like at this point, I might turn it around to make sure I don't see the needle on the front. And really that's all there is to it. Now these flowers can be grouped together or separate or they can be half stitched. You can do like a semicircle of stitches as long as you have a center and an edge. And I would always draw the circle. I wouldn't try to just wing it because you want to make sure that you have um, a nice smooth edge. The other thing I wanted to tell you is it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can be an oval or it can be irregularly shaped. It can be shapes like a freeform shape. Any shape you want to you want to have as long as you have a center point and an edge. Wendy, that is one of the most beautiful stitches in the whole world and it's fascinating and I've always kind of call that a pinwheel stitch and I know that's oh, not good. the proper name. What is the proper name for that? It's just a buttonhole stitch a or buttonhole, buttonhole flower. Buttonhole flower. But it, I, I have heard it called pinwheel stitch I'm sure before. that's not the right name, but I think my mother used to call it that. Doesn't matter. Wendy, that was so much fun. Thank you so much um, for being here. My pleasure. And next I have a beautiful doll dress to share with you. I would like to introduce you to my beautiful doll named Mei Ling. Mei Ling is wearing one of the most beautiful dresses that you could ever put on a doll. It's lavender, batiste, it has white French lace, entredor around the collar. Now what I really want you to notice is this bodice, which is totally lace uh, insertion and lace beading. She has a sweet little puff sleeves and a pretty little um, ribbon tie. And if you'll come down, look at her skirt. She has a beautiful, beautiful scallop skirt. Absolutely fabulous. And she has a sweet, sweet little slip, too. I have to show you her little slip. She is really dressed so pretty. But what we're going to talk about today is the little bodice where the whole bodice is covered with lace, uh, insertion lace and beading. One of the questions I get asked most often 
uh, is Martha, when I zigzag those laces together, sometimes I miss a piece of it. I just move over and I miss a piece. And that would be, for instance, this is what we're going to make the lace bodice out of. Do you see right here? I missed a piece of it. No problem. When you're zigzagging along and you miss a piece, just keep on zigzagging. Do not worry. Now, we call those missed areas holidays. We do not call them mistakes, but that's a holiday. After you finish all of your zigzagging, if you have a holiday or two, you simply go back a little bit above that holiday. And, all, you know, I learned to use these shish kebab sticks years ago in Australia. And it's always a good idea just to hang on to the holiday, push it in. I've got an edge joining foot, but sometimes I need to use my shish kebab stick just to push it in there. And now then I have fixed my holiday. I just simply stop after doing the zigzagging, pull it out, uh, clip the threads, and I'm through. My holiday is fixed. Now let's talk a little bit about making one of those lace bodices. I start out with pieces. All of these, well, the insertion and the beading, they all have straight sides, sides so they're just going to be butted together and zigzagged. Now, I'm going to make this whole fabric. Let me pull this back. I'm going to make this whole piece of fabric, and then I've got to do two things. Trace the bodice off on it and get a lining behind it because Mei Ling's dress has a lavender uh, lavender lining behind the lace, which is really awfully pretty to do. So I have my pa my doll dress pattern right here is the bodice. So I know I'm going to have to make my lace insertion or whatever I'm going to join together. I need to make it at least this wide and at least that tall. So I have my pattern. Now I'm going to turn this over. This is the lavender lining for this lace bodice. I'm going to trace the pattern off and I bet you can already guess what those little little tiny dots there are. That is the seam allowance. I'm going to trace, I'm going to trace off the seam allowance because I do have to have a seam allowance. I'm going to mark the center of the bodice and then I'm going to place probably with a little bit of temporary spray adhesive. I'm going to spray just a little bit on either the lace or the bodice kind of glue it down. Now, if I do want to put beading, excuse me, if I do want to run ribbon through the beading, I will need to use a bodkin and I will need to run it. Let me just pull this over here. I will need to run the beading through the ribbon before I um, temporary spray adhesive it down. This makes it real easy if you have a bodkin when you're running ribbon through. I need to go ahead and get all of that ribbon placed before I place it down. Then I'm going to sew from the back. I'm going to sew the two pieces together, straight stitch all the way around. And then I'm going to be ready to cut it out. And that is absolutely how easy it is to make this gorgeous bodice like Mei Ling has on. Now won't you join me as I share a beautiful vintage garment with you. This dress, which I purchased in Massachusetts, really has a name. It's called Mrs. Crocker's Bow Dress because I purchased it in a box. It was folded neatly, and on the outside, it was addressed to a Mrs. Crocker. The reason I call it Bow Dress is because it has wonderful lace-shaped bows. The top of the dress is absolutely exquisite with combinations, all different kinds of laces. The beautiful, beautiful hand embroideries and the embroideries are combined with lace-shaped bows on the top. Let me pull this sleeve over. It is so pretty, the little cuff of the sleeve. And of course, the inside of the sleeve on each on the outside has um, wonderful hand embroidery and lace insertion, lace edging. But what I really want you to do is to come down and look at this skirt. The beautiful embroidery, and by the way, the back of this dress is just as pretty as the front. The gorgeous padded satin stitch, and we have a wonderful lace-shaped bow in the middle, which goes over for a lace-shaped bow here, and then comes down for a lace-shaped bow. So this is quite creative in the front of the, these are the two uh, front panels of the dress, actually. And then I wanted to show you the side panel. Two front panels have the center bows and then they come down to the bottom for the side panels and then there are bows and embroidery all over the back of this dress. This really is a masterpiece. My guess would be it was a wedding dress. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I'm so glad you came and I'd like you to come back next time if possible. <music>